Hello, everyone. Today, I'd like to talk about how to fill in the application form for the Working Family Allowance Scheme, DUFA in short. Before that, if you want to know about the details and latest information of DUFA, please watch the video titled Introduction to the Working Family Allowance Scheme. If you would like to apply for DUFA, you need to fill in the application form and submit documentary proof. The DUFA application form mainly covers three sections, including personal particulars of the household applying for DUFA, information on working hours, income and assets of the household, as well as applicant's declaration. You can click the links in the description box below to watch the specific sections of the video. Section 1. Personal Particulars of the Household Applicants need to fill in the basic particulars of household in the first part of the application form. The claim period of a DUFA application covers the immediate past six months before the submission of the application. In other words, if you want to apply for DUFA for the period from January to June this year, you must submit your application within July this year. Please note that if you meet the eligibility criteria in certain months during the claim period only, you may still submit an application. Here, please fill in the number of household members, including the applicant, in the last month of the claim period. Household members refer to persons living with the applicant on the same premises in Hong Kong and having close economic ties. This normally includes husband and wife and those who live on the same premises and share or are obliged to share the provisions for a living. A person living alone may also apply for DUFA. If household members are temporarily not living on the same premises, such as leaving Hong Kong for study or work, but would reasonably be expected to return to live together, they would be regarded as household members. If there are any changes in the number of household members during the claim period, the applicant has to report the concerned months and details here. For example, a household was originally comprised of the applicant, his wife, their son, and daughter. But a son was born during the claim period, so the concerned month must be specified and the birth of the son must be stated in the column under details. In addition, if a household member moved out from the household during the claim period, you need to fill in the concerned month and details in this part and provide the member's personal particulars in Part 2 of the application form. Next is to fill in basic information such as residential address and contact phone number. Part 2 of the application form is to fill in personal particulars of applicant and all household members. The applicant must clearly fill in all personal particulars including names, Hong Kong ID card numbers, etc. For single parent households, that is, a single working parent, including guardian, living with at least one child aged below 15, the working hour requirements for DUFA application are lower. So if you are applying as a single parent, remember to tick yes under question 7 and specify your marital status. After that, please fill in the applicant's bank account information and number, including bank code, for receiving DUFA. Bank account number usually does not exceed 15 digits. The bank code can be found on the monthly bank statement or passbook. Please note that the applicant must be the account holder. Time deposit account, credit account, or foreign currency account cannot be used as the bank account for receiving DAFA. Next, please fill in the personal particulars of all household members, including their names, their relationships with the applicant, and other personal data. The information of each household member must be filled in separately. If there are more than four household members excluding the applicant, 
please use the supplementary sheet to application form WFA002B to fill in the information of the remaining members. If Others is selected when filling in the relationship with the applicant, please specify the relationship of the household member with the applicant. If the household has a child aged below 15 or aged between 15 and 21 receiving full-time non-post-secondary education, including full-time secondary and primary school, excluding evening school courses, Yijin Diploma Program, Foundation Diploma Programs, and Diploma of Vocational Education Programs of the Vocational Training Council, etc., each child may also receive a child allowance. If your household has children eligible for a child allowance, please make sure that you complete questions 6 and 7. Applicants must fill in the birth certificate numbers of their children. If the child does not hold Hong Kong birth certificate or Hong Kong ID card, other documentary proof must be provided. For example, one-way permit, re-entry permit, certificate of entitlement, passport with the relevant endorsement and landing slip, etc. Section 2. Information on working hours, income and assets of the household. In Part 3 of the application form, please fill in the income from work and paid working hours of the applicant or household members whose paid working hours are aggregated to apply for DAFA. First, please fill in the basic information, such as claim months, job details including employment status, industry, position, name and phone number of the company or employer, monthly income from work and monthly paid working hours, etc. Monthly income from work refers to the income after deducting the employee's mandatory contribution of Mandatory Provident Fund, that is, MPF, or Provident Fund. For example, if the salary is $10,000, after deducting 5% mandatory MPF contribution, which is $500, $9,500 shall be filled in as the monthly income. You should fill in the working hours too. Please note that the DUFA scheme allows household members to aggregate their working hours. If it is required to aggregate the working hours of household members other than the applicant, please provide the name of the member, job details, income from work, and paid working hours, etc. If the applicant or household member whose paid working hours are aggregated is an employee with the paid working hours specified in a contract or agreement with the employer, only one set of documents reflecting or proving the agreement with the employer for the relevant claim months, for example the employment contract, has to be provided and there is no need to submit the proof of working hours on a monthly basis. If the same weekly working hours is stipulated in the contract or agreement, the monthly working hours can be calculated by multiplying the number by 4.4 weeks. If the working hours are not specified in the contract or agreement with the employer, or the applicant or household members whose working hours are aggregated are self-employed, the monthly working hours can be calculated based on the actual paid working hours for each month and documentary proof of working hours should be provided on a monthly basis. In addition, employees can submit the form for reporting the working hours derived from paid absence, WFA004B, to report the working hours derived from paid absence. Here, please fill in the total monthly paid working hours, which is the sum of the paid working hours of all household members, including the applicant, who report working hours. For example, the monthly working hours of the applicant and his wife are 144 hours and 50 hours respectively. So the total monthly working hours are 194 hours.
If the total number of working hours reported exceeds 192 hours, the household is already eligible for higher allowance. Even if there are other working household members, there is no need to report their working hours. The total working hours of an applicant and his wife have already exceeded 192 hours. Even if the applicant's sister is a household member and has paid work, there is no need to provide her working hours here. But please note that her relevant income still has to be reported. Please note that you may report more than one paid jobs in the same month, including full-time and part-time jobs. In addition, if you are unemployed in some months, you may still submit an application. Based on the information provided, Working Family Allowance Office will assess whether the household is eligible for the allowance and calculate the amount of allowance to be dispersed on a monthly basis. If the space provided in the form is insufficient, please use the Supplementary Sheet to Application Form WFA002B. Applicants must submit documentary proof of working hours and income. For documentary proof of working hours, supporting documents generally include employment contracts, pay slips, or attendance records showing the working hours, etc. For documentary proof of income from work, Supporting documents generally include pay slips, salary receipts, bank passbooks, or monthly statements showing the salaries. If the applicant does not have the documents just mentioned, the following DUFA supplementary forms can be used to declare working hours and income. If you are employed by a fixed employer, you may ask your employer to fill in the employer's certification WFA008B form to report your income, working hours, paid absence, and other information. The employer or the company's responsible person must sign the form and stamp it with the company CHOP. If you are a self-employed person who runs a business or provides services, you may submit documentary proof including receipts for providing services, notices of personal assessment issued by the Inland Revenue Department, profit and loss accounting statements verified by a certified public accountant, etc. If you are not able to provide these documents, you may fill in the Statement on Work and Profit and Loss Accounting Statement for Self-Employed Person Running Business or Providing Services, WFA-005B, to report your work record, total income, total expenditure, net profit, and other information to be submitted together with the relevant documentary proof of the income and expenditure items, such as purchase orders, sales invoices, rental receipts, etc. If you are a driver of taxi, lorry, minibus, or other commercial vehicles, you may fill in the form WFA006B to report your work record, total income, total expense, net profit, etc., to be submitted together with documentary proof of income and expenditure, such as vehicle rental contracts and fuel charge receipts, etc. If you are a casual worker or providing services but are unable to provide documentary proof of working hours or income, you may fill in Form WFA-007B to report the details of each job during the claim period and list the reasons for not being able to provide documentary proof. Please submit together any documentary proof relating to the reported jobs, such as receipts for remuneration received, green cards, licenses, etc. Part 4 of the application form is to fill in information on household income. In this part, the applicant should fill in his or her income information and that of all household members. However, there is no need to report here the income that has already been reported in Part 3 of the application form. Household income includes all wages after deducting employees' mandatory contributions to the MPF, fee for services provided, allowances, tips, profits from business for the self-employed, rental income, alimony received, and contributions from relatives or friends not residing with the same household, etc. More examples are shown in the guidance notes for application under the DUFA scheme at the DUFA's website.
During the claim period, if the applicant or other household members have already received an allowance under the Pilot Scheme on Living Allowance for Carers of Elderly Persons from Low-Income Families, that is, the Carer Allowance, or an allowance under the Pilot Scheme on Living Allowance for Low-Income Carers of Persons with Disabilities, that is, the PWD Carer Allowance, the relevant allowance amount will be counted towards the household income in the same claim month. The household is not required to report the two types of allowance mentioned above. Working Family Allowance Office will conduct data matching with the relevant government department in respect of these two allowances and vet your application based on the information obtained. Part 5 of the application form is to fill in information on household assets. Applicants must report all their assets and those of their household members within and outside Hong Kong as in the last month of the claim period, such as bank deposits, cash value of insurance policies, investments, land, properties, taxi or public light bus licenses, and the accrued benefits that have been withdrawn or could be withdrawn from the MPF or Provident Funds, betting account balance, loans that have yet to be recovered, etc. More examples are shown in the guidance notes for applications under the Duffa scheme at Duffa's website. Please note that one self-occupied property can be exempted from the calculation for each household. For a jointly owned asset, please provide the percentage of share. Here is an example. The applicant and his wife held a joint deposit account with a balance of $40,000 with each holding $20,000, that is, 50%. Hence, the value of this joint account to be reported should be $40,000, and the percentage of share should be 50% for both applicant and his wife. If the assets are not enumerated in Hong Kong dollars, please specify the currency. If the assets include life savings insurance, the applicant should provide the settlement date, the cash value and dividends of the policy. If the settlement date of the annual statement is not the last month of the claim period, the value on the settlement day of the annual statement should be reported. Values to be reported include dividends and the accumulated amount that the policyholder can get when the policy is surrendered. Assets also include jockey club betting account and stocks. Applicants should indicate the balance of the betting account and the value of the stocks. In addition, if you have a safe deposit box, you should report the items inside and their values. As a general rule, the date of valuation of assets should be in the last month of claim period. If the information on the value of individual assets items in the last month is not available, please fill in the latest available value of the asset items. If the total monthly assets exceeded the asset limit in the last month of the claim period, the asset value of the previous month must be reported, so on and so forth. Section 3. Applicant's Declaration Part 6 of the application is about declaration on income and asset. The applicant should declare whether the applicant and all household members have reported all income from employment, other income, and assets. If not all income and assets have been reported, the applicant should provide the relevant information as soon as possible. Otherwise, the Working Family Allowance Office would be unable to process the application. Applicants should put a tick to indicate whether the total asset value of the household exceeded the asset limit of the Duffa scheme during the entire claim period. If so, please specify the months in which the asset limit was exceeded. Part 7 of the application form is Declaration by Applicant. Applicant must sign the declaration. The declaration includes that the applicant and all household members have read the Duffa Guidance Notes and Personal Information Collection Statement, while all the information provided in the application form, supplementary sheets, and supplementary forms, as well as any representations made in relation to this application and all documentary proofs submitted are true, complete, and accurate. They should understand that willfully making a false statement, misrepresentation, or concealment of any information in order to obtain DUFA by deception is a criminal offense. 
So, how can you submit the application form and documentary proof? Applicant must submit the completed application form together with documentary proof. Applicants may submit their online applications by using the e-submission service. For details, please scan the QR code on the screen to browse the DUFA's website at wfa.gov.hk or watch the video titled How to Use the e-Submission Service to Complete and Submit the Application for DUFA Scheme. The relevant documents may also be submitted by post or by using drop-in boxes. For the addresses of drop-in boxes, please refer to DUFA's website. Please note that if not all the documentary proofs are ready by the application submission deadline, the applicant may first submit the application form and the documentary proof that are ready and submit the remaining documents later. For other inquiries, you can scan the QR code on the screen to browse the DUFAS website at wfa.gov.hk or call 2558-3000.